Oh, let's start right here. Everybody say bless. 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 Oh, bless. bless. I'm blessed. Bless. Bless. Come on, let me hear you say it again. Everybody say bless. 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 Good morning, Lane College. I said, good morning, Lane College. I have been given the task to bring forth a word of prayer. So if you could get your mind in a state of worship and adoration for our God that woke us up this morning. Dear Heavenly Father God, we come to you this morning and we say thank you for waking us up, God. God, we say thank you for being the lover of our soul and the captain of our sea, Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for being omniscient, God. We thank you for being a sovereign God. We thank you for knowing every single thing, God. Right now we come before you and we say sorry for all that we've done, think, or said wrong, God. We say we are sorry for anything that is unlike you that it is in us right now, God. We ask for you to create in us a clean heart and renew in us the right spirit for worship, Jesus. Right now, God, we want to thank you for everything that you have in store for our lives, God. We want to thank you for being 
the one who has everything in control, God. We thank you for allowing us to wake up this morning and to fulfill our purpose, God. God, we thank you for purpose. We thank you for giving us a reason to wake up. And if we don't know what it is right now, we thank you for having our lives in your hands, God. We thank you for you being in control of everything. Right now, God, I want to pray for my peers. And I ask right now, that you give them a desire to long for you, God. I pray that you give them a desire to know more about you, God. I pray that you give them the desire to be, have less of them and more of you, God. Cast out all of us, and we want to glorify your name, God. Because when everything is bigger with you, God, everything will follow behind. Everything will be great. Everything will be perfect. God, we thank you and we say this in your name. Amen. Good morning. For thus says the Lord, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will visit you and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me, when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your futures and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you to ex into exile. spoke a word artist and um, I'm gonna give y'all a piece that's entitled I Need Answers. Is it wrong for wanting money the illegal way? I got tired of sleeping in my mother's vehicle in front of Washington Park. I'm bunched up with my siblings in the back seat trying to keep warm in this very uncomfortable position. So was it wrong for wanting money the illegal way? I'm constantly being denied from jobs. My applications mysteriously disappear. <laughs> I'm waiting on a phone call that never comes back because my name sounds too black. So was it wrong for wanting money the illegal way? I didn't have a diploma on my applications due to the closures of 50 schools. So I mean, what do you expect? Is it wrong for wanting money the illegal way? I watched my boy D-Boy make $300 off dub bags just to put food on the table. So was it wrong to want? Question. How come it wasn't wrong when police distribute drugs and guns into my community? How come it wasn't wrong to steal money from people? How come it wasn't wrong when you pushed us into, when you pushed us into ghettos and burned down our businesses? You see, my mama's job wasn't paying enough for that three-bedroom apartment that we wanted. So was I wrong for wanting more? You slipped rocks in my pockets and not handcuffs on my wrist. Why am I being arrested, officer? You punishing me for doing exactly what you expected from me. Arresting me for these drugs when the CIA was low-key our plug. They dropped work on our corners that was worth millions. Was that supposed to be a secret? So you refused for me to work, but you'd rather me serve it. <laughs> so who gets to want? How come your want come easier than mine? You don't have to work as hard. To achieve my wants, I have to turn into Steve Nash and deliver these dams to them things that are willing to shoot, that are willing to shoot, that are willing to shoot for satisfaction. So why not assist them? to feed my pockets. I place myself in a dark alley 
not visualizing the consequences of laying inside a coffin that you built for me. <laughs> so again, I ask, is it wrong? Thank you. Scholars and colleagues, put your hands together for Kareem and for a very thoughtful presentation. This week we have, uh, we have so much to celebrate. Good things continue to happen uh, at Lane College. There's so much for, for me to say positive about you and this student body. There are sometimes there are some challenges in our community. And while I will not address those challenges now, I will address those challenges tonight at 7 p.m. in the CMAC Auditorium. And so let me invite uh, each of you and all of you to come to the CMAC Auditorium tonight at 7 p.m. for a discussion uh, with the president on some matters and issues that are important to us. Now the persons that are required to be there are these. These are the persons that are required to be there. So listen. The required, the required persons are our athletes, our band, our cheerleaders, choir, and any and all students who are receiving scholarships. So if you're receiving a scholarship, if you're in the band, the choir, you're an athlete, if you represent Lane College in any way, Student Government Association, if you represent us in any way, I'll see you tonight at 7 p.m. in the CMAC Auditorium. We're just returning from Washington, D.C., where we had an opportunity to honor one of your own. And I'm pleased to present to you Mr. Jakari Ruff, who was the 2017 White House All-Star representing Lane College. Would you stand, Jakari? Congratulations. Congra Jakari was one of 400, he was one of 60 students selected from among over 400 students across the nation who applied to be White House All-Stars. And so he's quite honored, we're quite honored to have him in our midst. And he also has become one of our recent uh, Koch scholars and receiving a $20,000 scholarship. You ought to praise the Lord for him. You should also know that your president, President Keenan Lowry, I'm waiting till, till I get your attention. You should also know that your president, uh, Keenan Lowry, was a 2015 White House All-Star. And while there this week, uh, President Lowry, uh, we were there with all the presidents and uh, secretaries and folks being recognized and awarded. And uh, I looked up, and your president, among all of those folks, uh, had taken over the program. And so I wish you all would celebrate this leader of leaders, President Keenan Lowry. President Lowry, would you stand up and read, receive our celebration? Let me also just say a word of thanks uh, to our cheerleaders. Those men and women are so faithful. In season, out of season, vote down bus, working bus, whatever it is, they are faithful. Would you all celebrate our cheerleaders that are sitting right over there? And my last celebration today is a celebration of, of great success uh, that happened for us in the spring. And uh, as Coach Basemore about 
Coach Basemore, Coach Young, would you all approach? And as they approach, uh, let me invite these young men to, um, from our men's basketball team to approach with them. You all can go ahead and start putting your hands together and praising the Lord. For those of you that don't know, we have the uh, we have the coolest we have the coolest basketball coach in the SIAC anywhere across the country, Coach Brian Basemore. Y'all ought to put your hands together and praise the Lord for uh, Coach Basemore. And we might have also the toughest coach in the uh, in the SIAC. Who, uh, who's also coaching our cross-country team this year. And uh, I feel sorry for them from time to time uh, because he is, uh, he's a tough coach. Uh, coach Galen Young, would you put your hands together and praise to our Lord for Coach Galen Young. These young men who are behind me today, these young men made quite an accomplishment in the spring. In the spring, they won the Western Division of the SIAC men's basketball. They won the regular season. They were the regular season champions of the SIAC conference. And if memory serves me correct, Coach, did not lose a single game in this house. Is that right? You ought to put your hands together and praise the Lord for these young men. And so today we come and this is a special day in that these young men will receive their championship rings. And uh, I want to bring Coach uh, Basemore to the mic or Coach Young, uh, please uh, greet the crowd. Well, like, uh Dr. Hampton said, uh, we had a uh, pretty good year last year. Uh, these guys put forth the effort. They put forth their sweat, um, sometimes tears. Sometimes they uh, fought through injury. Sometimes we fought through adversity. But uh, we got the job done. And, and that's what it's about um, when you're dealing with athletics, when you're dealing with life in general. It's about how you finish how you finish uh, the race. Uh, you get knocked down, uh, you have pain, you have adversity, but it's how you deal with it. And um, for you young people sitting out here in this audience, these guys represent you as well. They're part of you. Um, you guys interact with these young men every single day. And um, they represent you all. Uh, they represent you all well. And. Uh, Today is just a small appreciation to all the hard work and sacrifice that these young men have, have put in. Because it's not easy. It's not easy being an athlete. Um, you still have to take care of your grades. You have to do a lot of things that you don't want to. Um, you have coaches like myself and Coach Basemore constantly pushing you, trying to get the most out of you. Sometimes that you don't think you have. But it's our job to um, dig deeper, and pull the best out of each and every one of these young men that we have on this stage. Um, we have a, half of these guys are new, and so hopefully this will inspire them to uh, continue with what we've accomplished, what we've established here at Lane College, and uh, to move forward in the future um, with bigger and better things to come. And so with that, I turn over to Coach Basemore. First of all, I just want to say God is good. And uh, without him, none of this would have been possible for none of us uh, up on this stage, uh, faculty, coaches, student body, no one in this building at this point in time. Uh, as you all guys all know, we overcame some real tough adversity last year. Uh, to get accomplished what we got accomplished through all the distractions and negativity that was brought on to Lane College and to ourselves and to our families and friends. 
and uh, you know, most of it was our fault. I'll be the first to admit that we, we were the butt of it, but from the guys behind me and the ones who graduated and went on to continue to stay focused, uh, to stay positive, to fight through all the adversity they went through, to take all the criticism we had to withstand, I love them for that. Um, I don't know too many other coaches or teams who could have went through what we went through and still overcame what we had to overcome to get this accomplished. So my hat's off to them. Uh, we just want to say thank you guys for the support that you provided for us throughout the season last year. Hopefully we can duplicate what we've done for you last year, but even though it's still falls than winning the whole thing. Uh, with that being said, I just want to turn it back over to Dr. Hamilton. But thank you guys for this opportunity and it's giving us a few minutes of your time to be recognized. Thank you. Joshua Levi Smith. Jalen Lewis. James Caldwell. Tevin Roberts, a little coach. Jay Patrick. Jade was our participant in the NBA camp this summer. Jameer Mix. Jaytez Taylor. Thomas. can celebrate her. They wouldn't have made it without her. And I declare, if I'm ever, if I ever have to go to war, and I'm going to be in the middle of the battle, I want to have on my side no other than Kim Darius Ash. Y'all ought to put your hands together. You all put your hands together for these young men. Dr. Goldman, come and take us to our next level. Thank you, Jess. Would you give our basketball team another hand as they make it back to their seats? Thank you, uh, coaches and uh, Dr. Hampton. I'm going to uh, introduce our preacher for this morning. Uh, and following that, uh, we're going to have another song by uh, Souls for Christ. The preacher for this morning is new to Lane College uh, as of this fall, uh, Reverend Freeman McKendra II. Uh, from across the nation, he shares his profound belief in the transformative potential of faith. Uh, Pastor McKendra incites hearers to encounter an imminent yet transcendent God, recognizing that same spirit in themselves and in their neighbors. Uh, he is requested around the country as a young adult uh, preacher uh, to preach and to uh, help people transform their sights into opportunities that uh, hearers will celebrate the word of God. The mission to preach has propelled Pastor McKendra's ministry from pulpits in Washington, D.C., Atlanta, Georgia, Little Rock, Arkansas, Riverside, California, uh, and he's exhorted worshipers to see themselves in God's divine image. 
Uh, he's a 1990 graduate, 1999 graduate of Little Rock Central High School. Uh, Reverend McKendra went on to obtain a BS in biology from Morehouse College. He received his Master's of Divinity from Phillips School of Theology at the Interdenominational Theological Center in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, and then during that time, he received several distinctions as a theological scholar, uh, including the Bishop Thomas Lanier Hart, Jr. Theological Scholarship Award and the Taggart Honor Award. Uh, he's done a number of things around the country in ministry. Uh, we are delighted to have him to be a part of uh, Lane College as our director of first year experience. Uh, but I learned very quickly after meeting Reverend McKendra shortly upon his arrival to campus that the pastor in him, the preacher in him, will not allow him just to be the director of first year experience, uh, but he wants to be involved in what God is doing uh, in the spiritual life and the spiritual climate of the campus. I'm going to ask you after this choir comes, after this Souls for Christ come with this next song, uh, to welcome Reverend McKendra with a big uh, Lane College welcome and more importantly, to hear what he will say to us uh, that the Lord has given to him on our behalf on this day. Let me ask you to put your hands together now for Souls for Christ, and then after that song, welcome Reverend McKendra to the podium. Total adoration. 
morning. Anybody love him on today? I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Oh, say I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you, Lord, that I love you more than anything. Come on and stand on your feet if you know that you love Jesus on today. You know that God is awesome, God. Come on, I love you. I love you, Jesus. I said I worship him. to the person that's sitting next to you. Just look at him for a few seconds. Just look at him. Tell him it's okay. Your leave out looks all right. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Tell him you're good. But what I want you to do is I want you to tell him, look, we've partied together before. Tell him we've turned up together before. But tell him, I need you to pray for me right now. Tell him, my name was on the financial aid list, and I don't know if I'm going to go home. And so I need you to pray for me right now. Tell him, I barely made it here to Lane College, and I want to make it over. I need you to pray for me right now. So tell him, serious. Tell him, I need you to look at me real quick. I need you to grab my hand. I need you to pray for me. 
You might not know the same God that I know. You might not go to church every Sunday. But is that just about 20 people in here that are willing to stand on their feet and say, I believe in God. I believe God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I could ever ask or imagine. Come on, I just need about 20 more people that say, if, if it wasn't for the Lord who was on my side, I wouldn't be here right now. So will you pray with me? I just need you to pray with me. No, do that real quick. Just grab somebody's hand. I just need you to pray with him for a second. I just need you to pray with him for a second. Just pray for whoever's sitting next to you. Say, look, you might not even be paying attention, but I'm praying for you. Don't pray like their life depends on your prayer. Pray like their life depends on your prayer. Somebody may have been sitting in their room last night thinking about taking their life, but your prayer might shift the atmosphere. Somebody thought that just because their relationship didn't work out that they weren't worthy but you got to remind them God says you're worth more than that you got to start praying for them somebody in this place this morning is worried about their mother their father their sister their brother who's back home but you got to pray for them let them know that God is going to take care of them Thank you, God, for all that you are, for all that you do. Keep us, oh God, that our lives might sing forth your glory. Comfort the anxious heart. Strengthen the feeble knees. Let us know that everything is going to be all right. Let us know everything is going to be all right. Now come on, seal your prayer by putting your hands together, just telling God, thank you. Come on, you can be better than that. Tell God, thank you. If you believe God is going to answer your prayers, can you just make some noise real quick? If you believe God is going to answer your prayers, can you just make some noise real quick? If you believe God is going to open some doors for you, can you just make some noise real quick? I dare you to shout right now like you're walking across the stage. Are there any seniors in the place this morning that says four years ago I didn't know I was going to make it, but look at me now. My grades have been kept by the grace of God. Can I, can I just get my seniors? Seniors, can y'all just testify to everybody else? Say, the Lord will keep you if you keep your mind stayed on him. Yeah. Y'all do me a favor. I know, you, I know you all don't necessarily bring Bibles to chapel, but you should always download your Bible app. You got your phone for everything else. Download a Bible. There's a, there's a passage of Scripture I want to read for you real quickly. If you have it, share it with somebody next to you. If you don't have it, I want you to just listen. There's a passage of scripture that comes from Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, the Old Testament book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29, it begins at verse, I want to begin reading at verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. I see some of my, my freshman orientation students with their pens out. 
they have their pens out is because Mr. McKendra told them if they can remember the text, the title, three critical points, and give me a reflection, then they might be able to skip their midterms. So I told my Tuesday class, but Thursday class, y'all got me? Y'all got me, that's good. So Thursday class, if you can remember the text, the title, three significant points, and give me a reflection on how it relates to your life, then we can talk about your midterm. Jeremiah chapter 29 is the text, and it begins at verse 11. It says, listen, I'm reading this from the English Standard Version. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Verse 12 says, then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. 13 says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. Just for a few moments, I want us to consider this thought. So the text was Jeremiah 29. The title is this, Stuck Here for a While. Stuck Here for a While. You know, there are times in our lives when our circumstance will make us extremely uncomfortable. A few weeks ago, I had the opportunity or took the opportunity to do as you are doing. Many of you, I sat in the bleachers doing chapel. Sometimes sitting in the bleachers in chapel can be a very uncomfortable experience. It can be uncomfortable because sometimes as you're sitting there in the seat, you'll notice that your spine begins to become a bit frustrated. It's frustrated because as your spine is attached to your behind and your behind is attached to that hard plastic seat, that blue plastic seat that you're sitting on, it will then tell your body that you're becoming ang anxious, that you're ready to get out of here. Not only that, but you may be sitting next to someone who's paying no attention. They're looking at their phone, looking over the same Snapchat that they saw yesterday, trying to figure out if the woman or the chick that they think is attractive actually likes them, but the truth of the matter is she doesn't, but they're still trying to figure out if she's going to pay attention when they leave the chapel and get to the cafeteria. Sometimes this moment can be uncomfortable. Not only is it uncomfortable because you're sitting here, but it's also uncomfortable because for many of us, we didn't grow up in church. We didn't grow up in a setting where we had to sit and listen attentively and tragically. We've grown to assume that everything we need to know, we can teach ourselves, that everything we have, we've made for ourselves, that everything we do, we can do for ourselves. But the truth of the matter is, it's uncomfortable when you have to listen and learn from someone else especially when you've usually taught yourself everything you know. Even for the children of God, there are moments when we find ourselves captive in, uh, in spaces that are unfortunate, that are unfavorable, that are uncomfortable, that are unjust predicaments. There are even moments in this moment specifically thinking when, when you'll consider your life and it's not just sitting in the gym that's uncomfortable, but the place that you exist in is uncomfortable. Here's a secret, most of your professors didn't even plan on being here this morning. Faculty, staff, and administrators can often be uncomfortable in this space because just like students, we probably have thought about the fact that I did not plan for my life to go this way. I didn't plan to be sitting here. I didn't plan to be standing here. I had visions of what my life was going to look like. I had visions of what my life was going to look like. I was assuming that I would be married with 3.5 children living in a five-bedroom house with two dogs, a cat driving, two cars, even one on Sundays, and then taking vacations, Kimora. And sometimes in that moment, I assumed that all would be comfortable, all would be well, and many of you dream the same thing. But then when we look and think about our lives, we realize that our life didn't go as we planned. 
and now we're uncomfortable. Here in Jeremiah 29, we see Jeremiah writing a letter to people who find themselves in an uncomfortable predicament. These persons, these children of God, these children of Israel, these people of God's chosen vessels have found themselves exiled. They're now slaves in a place called Babylon. They're trapped in Babylon. They cannot escape. They no longer have the comforts of the promised land. And in this moment, he is telling them what God has for their life. The letter, the letter that's written here instructs them, even though you are uncomfortable, God says, settle down. God says, settle down, don't get distracted. And the Lord wants to remind you that he has a plan for your life. Settle down, don't get distracted, for the Lord has a plan for your life. Stay with me if you will. I, I agree it's dangerous to tell the people who find themselves in uncomfortable spaces to settle down. It's dangerous because should you find yourself in an abusive relationship, I don't want you to settle down. Should you find yourself in a predicament where your life is being threatened, I don't want you to settle down. But I need you to understand there are moments in your life when though you may be anxious, though you may be uncomfortable, you're still called to settle down. Lane College may be that experience for many of you. It's uncomfortable. I've heard many freshman students say Graves Hall feels like a prison. They say when they get there, they, they feel like they, they're shackled, they're bound, but I need you to be mindful that Graves Hall is nowhere near a prison. You still have the freedom to come and go. You still have the authority to learn and to grow. You may not have the luxuries of life, but I need you to settle down. Lane College may not provide you with the amenities that you assumed you would have when you saw a college experience on a, a VH1 episode of My Favorite Life, but I need you to settle down. Settle down. Stay focused, for the Lord has a plan for your life. Listen with, with me and stay connected. There are two things that, that suggest to us that sometimes in the moment when we find ourselves uncomfortable, we become distracted. There are two things. There's a, there's a writer, a writer, this lady, Marcia Riggs, she has a book called Awake, Arise, and Act. And in her book, she says there's an ethical dilemma that presents itself to us when we find ourselves captive or in uncomfortable places. She says in this ethical dilemma, we sometimes struggle between competitive individualism and this social responsibility that happens in a group. You ever been somewhere, felt uncomfortable, and everybody then says, I'm going to get mine, you go get yours? You ever found yourself in a space where sometimes in these moments we struggle between do I want to just do me or try to figure out how to help everybody else? It's an ethical dilemma for in these moments when we're trying to figure out how we move forward, sometimes we have to choose between the critical space of how do I help myself be responsible for self, but also at the same time help lift everyone else. I've watched the volleyball team over the past couple of weeks play games. There are moments when in the fifth set the game becomes real tense. In those moments, there are, there, are, there are moments when you can even see in their eyes they're having to decide, how do I play this game? In those moments, there's a choice made. Do I play for myself or do I play for my teammates? Do I find a way of digging down deeper? Do I find a way of concentrating so that I might not just know myself is victorious, but that we as a team can win together? Here in these moments, stay with me, stay with me. I need you to understand, look at the words in the text. The text there says, Thus the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile to Jerusalem from Babylon. Verse 5 says, He instructs them to build houses, live in them, plant gardens, and eat their produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and don't decrease. 
First thing I want you to understand, if you're taking notes here, I need you to understand a word that comes to us not just from the book of Jeremiah, but it also comes from one of your fellow classmates, John, John, John Franklin. I think one of the things that happens that God wants us to understand when you find yourself in a situation that's uncomfortable, John says it this way, you need to stack and don't starve. See if I can explain it this way. John, I had a chance to talk with him real quickly in the library the other day in the Jacoby Jones lab, and he and I both agreed far too many people assume that stack don't starve only has to do with money. While you're here at Lane College, there are many of you that need to learn how to stack so you don't starve. Far too many people have been stacking their money but still starving. There are some other things that you'll need to learn how to stack while you're here. You need to learn how to stack A's on top of A's. You need to learn how to stack a good GPA in your freshman year on top of a good GPA your sophomore year. You need to learn how to stack one positive relationship on top of another positive relationship. Should you not find yourself stacking, you'll be stacking. Starving. You'll be starving for a graduation certificate at the end of your four years. You need to learn how to stack and not starve. Not only do you need to learn how to stack and not starve, but you need to learn how to build community. It amazes me that far too often we're quick to celebrate a fight, but we don't celebrate somebody's accomplishments. How is it? How is it that there are more people looking at a fight on Snapchat than there are people in the stands rooting on a team that represents you? How are we so quick to, to build somebody in a moment but then tear them down in another? You've got to learn how to stack and don't starve. Far too many people can name their haters, but they can't name their supporters. Look at the person sitting next to you and say, are you really my friend or are you looking to tear me down? I'm trying to stack some relationships, some that are going to take me somewhere, some that are going to help me grow, some that are going to help me to build, some that are going to help me to accomplish the things that God has for me in my life. Look at the person sitting next to you and tell them, I'm stacking today. Here's the second thing. The second thing is, not only do you need to learn how to stack and don't starve, you need to learn coach said this earlier, you need to learn how to stay focused. You need to learn how to stay focused. Far too often times in our life we get distracted by the wrong thing. Far too often we get distracted by things that are worth no value. It amazes me that sometimes we spend more, fault, more time on our phone looking at things that don't matter than reading. How is it that attendance, attendance at parties in the shack is higher than attendance in the library? Sometimes you've got to learn to stay focused. I don't care if you talk about me. I don't care if you run my name down. But at the end, what you will do is you will call me a graduate. You've got to learn how to stay focused. You've got to learn how to keep the main thing the main thing. In these moments, you've got to learn to tell yourself, if you're a student athlete, yes, I've got to practice, but I've got to keep my grades on the up and up. You've got to learn how to tell yourself if I'm a leader, I'm a leader not to be seen, but to serve. You've got to learn to say it's not about a t-shirt and what it says on the front, but it's about what the character of the person is that's wearing the t-shirt. Some of you look real good with your 1B30 mix and your Brazilian wavy, but every now and then you've got to have something in your head and not just on your head. Sometimes you need more than just red bottom shoes. Something that's going to wear out while you walk on it. You don't just need red bottom shoes. You need to read something every now and then. Sometimes you don't just need money in your pockets. You need knowledge in your brain. You need to learn to stay focused. She might look good today, but I swear if you're dumb as a doorknob, she won't be with you four years from now. 
I'm sorry to tell you, honey, you won't be cute always. You're going to get some crow's feet around your eyes. Things that look tight right now are going to start to sag. They don't have a girdle to tighten up everything. Every now and then, you need something that's going to keep you focused. You gotta stay focused. You gotta stay focused. I'm still amazed at how it is that students are quick to leave chapel. Quick to leave class. But you're the first one in the line at the party because you want to get in free before 12. I'm still trying to figure out how it is that you will shut the shack down. Wait till the lights come on. You musty as all get out. Sweating out your perm. You look raggedy, broken, busted, and disgusted. But you still ain't going nowhere. But you got to act like you got to leave class early. Stay focused. You got to stay focused. Look over at your neighbor. Tell him, look, don't be cute and be raggedy at the same time. Stay focused. Here's the last thing. So the first thing was I need you to learn to stack and don't starve. Thanks, John, for that. I appreciate it. Stack, don't starve. Here's the second thing. Stay focused. Here's the last thing. Struggle has a set time. Struggle has a set time. What I love about the text is the text, the Lord is very clear. The Lord says, you'll be in this situation for 70 years. Now, I thought to myself, I would be frustrated if I had to stay in something for 70 years. It's one thing to go through a problem for one day, but it's a whole other thing to struggle for 70 years. Now, I was frustrated when I realized 70 years was an extended period of time, but I realized that I missed my shout. I missed my shout because even though it's 70 years, it still not only has a beginning, it has an end. Miss Tompkins, if I was in church right now, I would probably hoot like a pastor and I would say you ought to be glad that even though you're struggling right now, trouble don't last always. You may be going through problems right now, but it's going to end. You may be difficult days right now, but it's going to end. Look over to your neighbor and say, yeah, my name might be on that list, but it's coming on soon. My bills might be high right now, but they'll be paid soon. My name right now may be missing, but God's already signed my name. This is my freshman year, but senior year is right around the corner. Every now and then, you ought to get excited about the fact that this relationship might not be what you want right now, but if you let that Negro go today, your troubles will be over tomorrow. Sometimes your problems have an end time. You you have a set date, and God's got a plan for your life. That's all I want you to do. Here's the last thing. Here's the last thing that you can. Here's the last thing that you can get out of here. Here's the last thing. I just need you to look over at your neighbor one more time. So you prayed for me the last time, but I need to tell you something this time. I need to tell you God's got a plan for my life, so I need you to act like it. God's got a plan for my life, I need you to act like it. So when you see me, don't come talking about drama. I need you to talk about the plan God has for my life. I don't want you to talk about my struggles, talk about the plan for my life. God's plan is that I'm not going to be broke, but I'll have everything that I need. God's plan is not that I'm going to be at the back of the line, that I'll be at the front of the line. God's plan for my life is that not only will I have a BS degree, but I have a master's degree and a PhD. Is there anybody in here this morning that's willing to say, you know what? I know this is the gym and I know this is chapel service, but I'm going to act like I'm in church right now. I'm going to shout about the fact that God's got a plan for my life. Mama may not have been anything. Dad it may have walked out on me, but God's got a plan for my life. I may have struggled for a few days, but God's got a plan for my life. You may not know me right now, but keep watching the TV. God's got a plan for my life. God's going to do something that's going to blow your mind. Give me a, 
do me a favor, just close your eyes real quick. I dare you to ask God to show you who you gonna be. The word says, seek and you will find. Ask and it'll be given. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. I dare you to ask God to show you who you're going to be. And I want you to think about the fact that whatever you can imagine, God can do more than that. Say, I'm not just going to be somebody's baby mama. I'm going to be somebody's wife. Tell somebody, I'm not going to be somebody's baby daddy. I'm going to be a provider. I'm going to have my own name. I'm going to have my own things. God's going to do something with my life. And do me a favor. Stack, don't starve. Stay focused. And struggle has a set time. But you can't do it by yourself. You need somebody else to go with you. You need somebody else to go with you. Tell them, now, you went with me to the party last Thursday. I need you to go with me to the altar this morning. Yeah. I waited on you to put your makeup on, and you had way too much on and didn't say nothing to you, but you still need to come with me to the altar this morning. So grab your neighbor hand and say, look, I need you to come with me down here this morning. I'm trying to get closer to what God has for me. I'm trying to get closer to what God has for me. Say, I've been struggling long enough. I've been struggling long enough. Say, today is my last day depressed. Today is my last day starving. Today is my last day being afraid. Today is my last day thinking less of myself. When you get up here, When you get up here, stay focused. I need you to stay focused when you get here. Stay focused. Just grab somebody's hand, just close your eyes, just bow your head just for a moment. Stay focused. Just stay focused for a moment. I need you to just stay focused for a moment. I need to tell you why you're here. Your troubles won't last forever. I need to tell you, your troubles won't last forever. So what I want you to do when you get here, is I want you to first, I want you to tell the Lord, thank you. Now, I really want you to tell him, thank you. I need you to think about how far God has already brought you. Think about it. I really want you to think about how far God has already brought you. You didn't even think you was going to make it out the neighborhood, but look at you now. You were sitting in your room thinking about taking your own life, but look at you now, still standing. It's okay, you don't have to be embarrassed. If you need to cry, go ahead and cry. Just let your neighbor know these are tears of gratefulness. I'm grateful that God has been good to me. I dare you to even be thankful for your parents and your guardians somewhere else that helped you get here. Your mama didn't think you had enough money to go to college, but look at you now. Daddy didn't even show up when you needed him to fill out the tax information, but you're still here. Look at you now. You ought to be able to tell God, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. God's been good. So instead of you saying, God, I need you to do this, that, or the other, just say, God, be the same God now that you were then. Be the same God now that you were then. You brought me over, bring me over again. You delivered, deliver again. 
You made a way, make a way again. You provided, provide again. yourself. You need the people standing next to you to help you. I want you right now to make a commitment. Squeeze the hand and say, look, I'm not hating on you. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you become everything God has for you. You're going to fulfill the power of potential in your life. Everything God says, God's going to bring to pass. Tell them today is the first day of your brand new life. This is the first day. I dare you right now, challenge yourself, encourage yourself, strengthen yourself, say, anything I need to let go, I can let go. I can let go. And still know that God is going to provide all of my need according to his riches and glory. I can let go. I don't need it. I've got God. Not only do I have God, but I've got the people standing next to me encouraging me. I just need you to begin to see yourself stacking right now. Start stacking right now. Teacher may not understand you, but stack right now. Start telling yourself, I'm going to succeed in this class. You may not be able to understand them, but tell yourself, I'm going to succeed in this class. Tell yourself right now, not only am I going to start stacking, but at this moment I'm going to stay focused. Start telling yourself, God, I want you to show me where to go. Show me where to go, God. Show me what to say, God. Show me which direction you want me to go in my life, God. If that's you right now, I dare you, just lift up your hands and say, God, show me which way to go. Show me which way to go, God. Show me which way to go, God. Show me which way to go, God. I'm walking, God, with you. I'm talking with you, God. Show me which way to go, God. Everything's going to be all right. Show me which way to go, God. Show me which way to go. Now do me a favor. After you've lifted your hands, hug somebody. Tell them everything's going to be all right. Tell them everything's going to be all right. Tell them trouble don't last always. 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 Altar. You leave this altar telling the world God made a difference in my life. I may be stuck here for a few days, but God's going to make a way. 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 God, right now in the name of Jesus, for everybody that's here under the sound of my voice. revealing unto them, God, your glory, so that they might yet see you in the land of the living. And we'll tell you thank you. Now just put your hands together, tell God thank you. Come on, you can be better than that. Come on, shout, tell the Lord thank you. Everything's going to be all right. 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 For God knows the plans he has for your life. Plans for you to prosper. For you to have a future. Hope. God bless you and God keep you. Is my prayer. Tell somebody God loves you. God loves and so do I. And so do I. So do I. Y'all go eat lunch.